Somebody did the dishes earlier. And the coffee is brewing. I bought this mug at work earlier today after I'd punched out. I like the color and it's so smooth. The cats are wrestling again. I planned on watching The Mask of Fu Manchu, it's a 1932 film starring Boris Karloff in the titular role. I planned on watching that earlier this evening, but the Tigers game ended up running kind of long. Um, they won 9-6. to six. There's only one game left in the regular season. It was Jose Valverde's 48th consecutive save. Come on, you don't give a shit about that. Yeah, I, the game ran late, so I didn't end up watching Mask of Fu Manchu. Um, last night, Dave and I watched a pretty good Universal Studios classic. Uh, I believe it was from 1946. It was called House of Horrors, and it starred Rondo Hatton. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Rondo Hatton, but he's become this he's become this um, cult icon. Um, he was a, a man, a journalist, who at the age of 30 um, had begun experiencing the effects of a condition known as acromegaly, or sometimes um, referred to as gigantism. It's what Andre the Giant had, it's what actor Richard Kyle had, it's what professional wrestler The Big Show has. Um, I shouldn't say Richard Kyle had it like he died, he's still alive. Um, it's a condition that like greatly enlarges the head, causes really bizarre disfigurement, usually gives um, sufferers enormous feet, hands, and, and, a, and a big barrel chest. Um, Rondo, unfortunately, died, I believe it was in 1946, actually. It was just when Universal Studios had begun heavily promoting him. Um, he died of a heart attack, which was directly related to the disease from which he suffered. But, um, yeah, from the age of 30 until his death, he grew increasingly disfigured, and um, his wife left him when he'd first uh, begun experiencing the symptoms and getting uglier and uglier. It's kind of a sad story. Um, I don't know if he ever found work as a journalist much after that, but some way, somehow, he, he found work in Hollywood, um, usually as a, a tough guy or a murderer or gangster type in, um, in various productions. And um, if any of you have ever seen The Rocketeer, the seven-foot-tall henchman with the really ugly face, um, that makeup design that was applied to that actor, Tiny Ron, um, that, that makeup design was uh, inspired by Rondo's face. Um, last night watching House of Horrors with Dave, that was the first time I'd actually heard Rondo speak. I'd seen clips of him before. Um, We'd watched the Sherlock Holmes film, The Pearl of Death, with Basil Rathbone, um, and he's in that. Uh, he factors in to the ending of that film. Don't won't, won't spoil anything more than that. It's a damn good one, though. Um, really entertaining classic. Uh, but he doesn't speak um, a single line of dialogue in that, that Sherlock Holmes film, but um, he says a lot in House of Horrors. And uh, it was just interesting getting to hear him speak. I mean, he didn't have the most complex dialogue imaginable, but he, he did come across to me as a, a natural. He looked very comfortable in front of the camera, and what lines he had, he, uh, he delivered them well. Um, yeah, I recommend it. I recommend it. Um, I don't think anybody's ever written a biography of uh, 
Rondo Hatton. There seems to be very little information about his actual life, so that's something I've been considering doing. I want to be Rondo Hatton's biographer. Maybe I can um, incorporate some highly detailed sketches of him and, and shit. House of Horrors, um, I guess I should tell you what the hell it was about. Um, it was about um, this starving artist, uh, this Frenchman living in America in the 1930s, or 1940s actually, um, and he's literally starving. He hasn't sold any of his sculptures in a very long time, and uh, his work is just panned by all of the um, published critics in town, and um, after he fails to sell what he considers to be his finest piece, he goes to the docks and, um, you know, he goes there with the intention of committing suicide. He's just going to jump into the water, end his life. And he ends up rescuing this uh, hulking, disfigured man, Rondo, um, who was pulling himself up onto the, the wharf. He's like, dazed and injured and almost drowned himself. And somehow, it's never explained, the uh, the little French sculptor gets him back to his place and feeds him, nurses him back to health, and they become good friends. And The sculptor keeps reading these scathing reviews of his work in newspapers and local magazines, um, which he can afford, despite not being able to afford food. Just thought of that. Um, anyways, he, uh, you know, these these reviews piss him off to no end, and he kind of implies to his new friend uh, that he should probably go and kill these critics if they, um, if there's to be any hope of him selling any pieces and earning some money so that the two of them can eat. So naturally, this character, who's actually a serial killer, dubbed by newspapers the Creeper known for breaking women's spines. Uh, he goes and offs all of these critics and um, an investigation ensues and uh, yeah it's, it's a it's a it's a creepy atmospheric uh, 1940s thriller. Uh, it was a lot of fun to watch especially around this time of year so yeah I recommend it. Coffee's done. I'm gonna try out the new mug. Tim Horton's decaf again. Oh yeah. It, it definitely tastes better out of this cup. I like this. This is the classic MySpace Facebook hide that I'm fat angle. Um, well, after I finished my coffee and checked my email and gotten this up on YouTube, I think I'm going to watch one of uh, Roger Corman's loose Edgar Allan Poe adaptations from the 1960s starring Vincent Price. And I sincerely wish that all of you could crowd my bedroom and watch it with me tonight. But obviously that can't be, so... Now let me end this like Carson did his uh, career in late night. I bid you all a, how did he say it? I bid you all a most sincere and heartfelt good night.